Hello guys, I'm your data stage admin tutor and today we are going to explain or teach you that what happens on background if we create a data stage project and second thing is what happens on background when we create or import a job. So if you are a data stage administrator, you should know these things uh, because you will face day-to-day -day issues like your uh, project is corrupted or your job is corrupted, then you need to fix it. So you need to know that whenever you are creating a data stage project from data stage administration console, that what happens on the background, that is your server side. Because data, data stage follows client-server architecture, so whatever we made in the client as a developer or designer, a copy or replica also get created on the server. Second thing is, let's say we create a new job. We uh, open data set designer and we create a new job. Then what will happen on the server side, on the backend, on Unix or Linux? Or we are importing a job, a new, you know, a, a job is there from other, another project and I, I'm importing in my another project. In that case, what will happen on the server side? So guys, let's move on on the first topic, what happens on background if we create a data stage project. So guys, if you have seen my earlier video that how to create a data stage project, I created a project named as Z underscore one, two, three, four, correct? So if I do PWD command that is present working directory, it shows that Z underscore one, two, three, four in the project directory. This is my project directory and this is the project. Now when I created this project, if you see in my last video, I created it from data stage admin console. Now I'll show you that what it contains in the background because this is a server and you made it from the client. I'll do ls minus ldr that shows that list my files. You will see this much, uh, you know, files are present here. I'll scroll up to show. Yeah. So it shows total 1208 files. So guys, these are the predefined files which you see from 2008. So whenever the first time you uh, install data stage and the first project uh, gets uh, created, these are the predefined files or you can say libraries or the files which are required for the regular functionality of a project. So I'll go down to show you that what it contains ds underscore transform, ds underscore routine, ds underscore mf profile, jcl template. These all are predefined files or prerequisite for a project to work properly. So when we created that project, at the back end, these files were getting created. These are some files. These are some files and as well as some configuration files which get automatically created in the project. And there are some folders which create, you know, which contains your uh, parameters which are supplied on the project level. PH directory that contains your phantom logs. VOC file that is your vocabulary file which contains all the, you know, description, annotation or whatever the word you have used, whatever the terms you have used in the project that will get stored in this VOC file. Como directory, this is, you know, your uh, history directory. It contains all the history, like when you created this project, this history will contain into this, uh, you know, Como file. You're running a job, again, it will contain the history. Every history you are running on a project, any utility you're running on, on a project, everything will come into this Como directory. Even when I created this project and these files were getting created, these single files were getting created, which are required for the, you know, regular functionality of project even that will get stored in this common directory. So guys, uh, also this uvodvc.config file, uh, if you want to get, uh, you know, uh, connect to any other sources like uh, Teradata or Eccle, SQL Server and anything, and you want to do a ODBC connection, that all those details should also come here in uvodvc.config file. So this is basically what happens at the server side when you create a new project. Now let's move on to see that what happens when you create a new job. So this is my designer. Whenever I open my designer, 
it, it shows a screen like this if you want to create a new job or something. I'll do cancel right now. And I'll open the jobs. If this product is having any job. In the last, uh, uh, you know, tutorial I, or, you know, uploaded a job here, ABC. So whenever you are creating any job, there will be six files which will get created at the server side. If you see this file, RT underscore status one, RT underscore log one, RT underscore config one, DS underscore temp one, RT underscore BP one dot O, and RT underscore BP one. Let me rephrase them ls minus ltr. Yeah. So if you see these files, RT underscore status one, it is basically a directory. Again, RT underscore log one directory, RT underscore config one directory, temp directory, RT underscore bp one dot o is again a directory. These all are the directories, and these file contains your two files over 30 and data 30. So basically this is going to contain your status, job status. If it is compiled, running, or uh, this is failed about it, or reset, this will contain your logs, this will contain your configuration, this will contain your temporary data, and these two are basically for, uh, you know, to contain your data of compilation and all, if that job is compiled or not, or uh, if, you know, you are having any transform, and you see compiler is there. All this information will be contained in these files. So just to be sure, when, whenever you are uploading a new job or importing a job, it will create six files. Let me do one thing. So let me create a job to show you that uh, what it will do at the back end. I'll go to File, New. I'll create on Server Job. So you know this will be a new job which will be created. Let me open palette and put some stages here. Palette is the thing which contains your stages. Let's say I'll put a sequential file here. And just save it. I'll save it in jobs, MDR. And ABC. In MDR folder, I'll, I'll create a new job, ABCD. Save. So you see that some processing is going on here. That means uh, repository is getting updated with a new job which I have made. This is ABCD. Now I'll show you when, as soon as I created this job, how many files has been created on the server in the backend. Now guys, see, these six files are created, RT underscore status 2, earlier we were having RT underscore status 1, RT underscore log 2, RT underscore config 2, RT underscore BP dot 2 dot O, RT underscore BP dot 2, and DS underscore temp 2. Now you might have seen that this VOC file is also updated, that means this is a vocabulary file. So I have put one sequential file here. So this ABCD job name as well as this sequential underscore file underscore zero name will also get stored into this vocabulary. So whatever you are putting into your project, everything will uh, you know come under this VOC file. Now you have seen that these files contains two two files, data 30 and over 30. That means first of all, there is a defined limit of two GB of each file, which is defined at server side or data 30 file, as soon as the 2GB size is expanded, it will go to over.30 file. Now let's see what it contains. These uh, directories, RT underscore BP2, I'll go to this directory, LS minus LTR. I'll see nothing is there. I'll go to, let me go to this directory, which we seen earlier, RT underscore BP1. What it contains, it contains this, Trans1, let me open it. So you can see that it contains all that, uh, you know, like parameters, these are your job parameters. These are your column names, correct? These are the column names which are defined into your job. 
and how they are connected. It also shows the connection link name. Let me open the job again, the first job. This is the first job. If you'll see, we have DS link 17, DS link 15, update underscore add, LK underscore set. Everything will come here. If you'll see column, these are the column names, but these are connected by DS link 17. This is DS link 15. Okay. I'll go down to see if it shows more links and all. Basically, it is defining your column length as an array size. So this it shows basically at the back end that what is going on into your job. This is a loop defined. What is a stage variable defined? Everything will come into this RT underscore BP1. Let me go to bp.o directory. This art is for bp.o. I'll go to this one to show you that what it contains. I'll again open the first one. It is something is in a binary format or the format which your data stage understands. So guys, it must be clear now to you that if I created a new job ABCD, what it does at the back end, it created these six files. So you need to make sure that whenever anything wrong is going in with your job, either job is corrupted or not, you need to first come into this directory and see if all these six files are present or not. It can happen that any of the file has been deleted, then you need to reconstruct it back with a sync predict utility. Uh, in the next video, I'll show you that how to, uh, you know, recover it back by sync predict utility as well. But for now on, I'll say goodbye. And uh, guys, subscribe to my channel if you want to get notifications of my new tutorial, which I'll be uploading soon on uh, my channel. So just subscribe and pass it ahead to the, uh, you know, newcomers who are in, in IT industry and want to learn something and uh, don't want to spend money in the institutes. So guys, stay tuned. I'll be back with more videos.